Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be out there, a massive warm welcome to this, the Freaky Friday Show, right here on www.truthfrequencyradio.com, where we offer you the very best of protection from deception, and what a Freaky Friday we have got lined up for you. But before we get anywhere tonight, let's get the Woo crew out of the way. Awesome chaps, we've got Johnny Whistles, Joe Joseph, and the one and only Scotty Lopez joining us. I'll come to you first, Scotty. Is this your first Freaky Friday? Uh, no, I was on last Freaky Friday, I believe. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, you missed that, I guess. I guess you didn't didn't see old Scotty. Right, see, there you go. We're, I'm on a different timeline, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> you missed my deliberate bloody joke. Yeah, no, no, no. It's all good, man. I didn't miss it. No, I, was kind of playing, I missed I was it. Playing, <laughs> you certainly <laughs> did. Ain't no doubt about it, man. I got to tell you, man, you missed it. You missed it. Like a there you go. So. Did you enjoy last night, though, Joe? Oh my goodness, dude! Talk about it's a it's a treat to be able to discuss these kind of issues with people like Max Egan and Chris Everard because they do so much research into the, the you know these very important topics. This, of course, being you know Paris and. Of course, Max Egan done, has done a lot of activism, you know, with the Palestinian uh, effort. And, you know, gosh. So what what an awesome opportunity to be able to, to, to go through all of the events. And we've had a week to digest all that news. So I think, you know, we're, I think we're heading in a good direction, Kev. I got to tell you, as far as um, kind of picking up all the pieces and trying to piece together what really happened. Exactly, because it was a week tonight, right now, that we were breaking the story live. And if you look back over all the shows on TFR that covered this throughout the week, then I think you will see there was a plethora of information. Now, we didn't point the finger at any individuals in particular, but we gave people lots to think about. Joe? Yeah. I thought I heard you wanted in there, man. No, 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 no. As a matter of fact, uh, I think Whistler wants in. (laughs) <laughs> Johnny Whistles, head to the back cave, man. Let's get the Wookiees out of the way. Yeah, I might as well, Kev. We've got 34 people in here just now. So thanks, everybody, for turning up. Starting with the one and only Joe in the house. Lucky, we've got Penelope, Irish Pete. We've got Adam. We've got Angie Marie, Demarest, Caroline. We've got Cheryl. We've got Chris, Daryl. We've got David, Elvis. Uh-huh. We've got Erica Warrigan. How you doing, brother? We've got Fred Rico, Gergs, John Tito was here next week. Jonathan, we've got Kenneth Webb. How you doing, brother? How you know in here with us? We've got Kev Baker. Ken Kirk. Foot. Yeah, Ken Foot. We've got Kirk. We've got Libby. Uh, we've got Lichty Lass, Mark, Matthew, Michael. We've got Nancy, Peter, myself. Real in for today, something like that anyway. We'll get Reese, Sam, Scottish John, TFR Wookie, Time Lord, The Monkey, no, sorry, Time Monkey, uh, Timothy, and last but not least, Kev, Wiggly Get It. Absolutely fantastic. And tonight we are going to be joined by a very special guest indeed from all the way down under, Mr. Max Egan. No, you've not got deja vu, folks. However, that is going to become so apt and relevant as the night progresses. But before we go anywhere, I've got something to deal with here for a friend and a past guest on the Kev Baker Show and somebody that we all know and love dearly. And this is from Ben Fellows. Now, Ben is under a lot of attack right now, and that really shouldn't be surprising to any of us considering he came out and he named and shamed the establishment and he even had the audacity to go and win in a court of law. Well, the harassment continues, unfortunately, but Ben and Jackie, who are travelling right now, have asked me to put out the following statement on their behalf. So, here we go. I am saddened to learn of all the hate and anger which has been generated by trolls, informants and shills on the internet regarding my trip to see the Dalai Lama in India. I am not on holiday. I am going to see the Dalai Lama to raise awareness for victims and survivors of child abuse as the United Kingdom is intent of covering it up and discrediting any individuals in the press. When our government and press fail us, 
we have no choice but to seek guidance from a higher authority. And it seems that the Dalai Lama and the Buddhists are one of the few religions not knee-deep in scandals themselves. So I am currently travelling across Turkey to hopefully take a flight next week to New Delhi. I have travelled across Europe to keep the funding of this trip down to a bare minimum as we are relying on generosity, kindness and support from our friends and the general public. Now these trolls have caused us a great deal of damage. Our GoFundMe page has been suspended, my Facebook account has been disabled and we are suffering under a barrage of threats and intimidation. Why is it so wrong to speak out about child abuse? We all understand by now that it's going on in politics, the entertainment industry and the wider community and has done for many years, in fact decades. The government is busy covering it up, so why is it wrong to keep raising awareness for victims and survivors? That's why I spoke out originally, not for myself, but for all of the other victims and survivors who were too afraid to come forward. So here we are again. We should all be up in arms regarding this issue. They can stop our funding and I will walk all the way to India. They can harass and intimidate me and I will still fight on. I will never stop until we have safeguards in place for our children and support for both the survivors, both past and present. Everything they throw at us makes me stronger, as child abuse is a clear-cut case of good versus evil and right versus wrong. The Dalai Lama is a wise and intelligent human being who I, discuss, who I will discuss the issue with and hopefully bring the world's press attention back to where it belongs the victims and the survivors of child abuse. If the Dalai Lama is not available when I get there, then I will wait until he is available to see me. Love to every victim and survivor in the entire world, and the fight continues going beyond the fear. And that is from Ben Fellows and Jackie, who are currently travelling, as I said, right now. And Joe, I received messages today uh, a few of my other guests who have had on, Ben, he received messages of hate and harassment aimed at Ben. And like I said before I opened up that segment there, we shouldn't really be surprised, Joe, when somebody like this is the target for a sustained trolling and abuse attack. What What's the old saying? You know, you're catching flack. That means you're closer over the target. So, I mean, obviously he struck a chord. There's a track record of pedophilia and um, shenanigans going on. You know, not just, you got to remember, this is not a UK thing. It has a lot of focus in the UK because you've had some high profile cases come out recently, but this is a global epidemic, if you ask me. Uh, and the people that are harassing him, you know, their bosses or the people they support or whatever you want to call them, are the ones that, that think that it should be almost like a, um, I don't know what you call it, like a, almost like a religion, that it should be respected as such, you know, almost like a religious ritual or, or perhaps we're, even we're like the, a marriage, you know? Yeah, we're the weirdos, Joe, for not thinking right, it's right. right. That's the way they frame it. But that's that's the problem, you know, is that that's not the case at all. And, you know, Johnny, uh, we we've... We're all born with this sense of right and wrong. We all know it coming out, you know, as, as, as children, we understand the basic concept of that. And I mean, dude, I don't care how old you are, or what time period you grew up in. That's just wrong, dude. <laughs> it's wrong. Yeah. yeah that, I mean, this is why we, we have to get Ben Fellows word out there because when people start to realize what kind of society that we're living in, that somebody has to leave their own, their own home, their own family, their country, because you win a court case. That is that to me just blows my mind, Joe. And I, I just hope that people see what's happening. And the more we talk about it, obviously, the more the people will hear it. So, and Ben is no more or less important than any other victim out there. It's just that I personally met the guy and I really connected with him on that day and I still have to this day and I'm still 110% behind this guy and I can't make any of you guys out there support him but trust me, this is somebody that 
well, if it wasn't for people like him, these perverts would be able to carry on. So and, you know, there's, there's power, Kev, in the power of the individual. And that's something that you have to understand and you have to harness. And it's something that Ben is doing. You know, he, as one person, one individual, is striving to make change within his sphere of influence. And your sphere of influence is as big as you want it to be. You know, it, it yeah. really is. Yeah, I just I just want to kind of echo what Joe said. You know, if he was able to stir up that much um, trolling and and hate and discontent, yeah, yeah, then he really hit a chord and uh, he's on target. So right, absolutely. Okay, Kev, all you, buddy. Absolutely, and we're just about to bring Mister Max Egan onto the show. But to set up this segment, we're going to play a quick video now. Some of you will have heard of this before. Some of you won't. And this is more relevant to our American listeners than anything else. Because when I first heard of this, well, it didn't really make much sense to me. And I wish I hadn't scraped the surface. Because what you're about to hear tonight is going to blow your mind. But Joe, this all came to light with our friend J.D. Moore and something called the Berenstain or the Berenstain Bears. Stupid Berenstain Bears, dude. Stain. Will we listen to our sister, Melissa Dykes, break it all down for us? That would be lovely. Absolutely. B is not a news broadcast. I just want to warn you up front that what I'm about to talk to you about may cause your brain to ache and then slowly feast upon itself much the way that hypodermically injecting about a dozen Slurpees directly into your skull might. So if you start to feel a warm trickle on your cheek, that might actually be your brain. I can't believe I'm doing a video on this. This information was sent to me two days ago, and I am not over it yet, and so I'm going to have to talk to you guys about it. I, I don't know what to do with myself right now over something that seemingly should not be that big of a deal and yet somehow it really is. Do you remember the Berenstein Bears from when you were a kid? I do because the B book was one of the first books I ever learned how to read. And I remember reading it with when I was about two with my mother. I remember this very clearly because it was one of my favorites, and even once I got too old, because it's such a simple book, I still... My mom was so good at telling stories and reading books, and I, I kept wanting to read it even once I was too old to, to really read it, because it was one of those sentimental things, and I kept my copy from my childhood, and I read it to my kids, and I have very vivid memories of the Berenstain Bears books. It's one of those vivid, visceral memories from childhood that I have. And I remember thinking to myself, how do I pronounce this? Is it Berenstain or Berenstein, like Frankenstein? Now, flash forward to two days ago when I was sent a bevy of information from a very nice guy named Jason on YouTube very well researched, has a whole playlist and a whole bunch of information, and that is going to come in future reports once I've had a chance to fully digest what in the hell is going on here. He asked me, do you remember the Berenstein Bears? And I, yeah, of course, I remember them. I, I still have one of the books in my house. How, how do you remember it being spelled? Well, that's easy. It's B-E-R-E-N-S-T- E-I-N, Baron, Berenstein. Not anymore, you guys. It It's not Berenstein. It's apparently Berenstain with an A. Look at this. Look. Look at it. Do you see that? What the hell is going on? Look. What? I'm sorry, but I have not... I have not gotten over this. It's been two days and I'm not over this. That looks so weird to my brain. My entire physical being does not want to accept this. Just doesn't want to accept it. 
And I flipped inside the thing. Because I, I ran into my kid's room and I went, it's Berenstein, obviously. This is just silly, right? No. Down here in the copyright information, this book right here, which is from 1971, copyright. Stanley and Janice Berenstain. Berenstain. What is going on here? I have lived my entire life in a world where there was no such thing as a Berenstain bear. Are, have we entered, like, an alternate reality? Is this a glitch in the Matrix? Is this the multi-universe, multiverse, multiple dimension theory? Like, what in the hell is going on? Sorry about that. I'm gonna, I'm bringing it back down. We're, we're coming back down. I'm going back to my center here. When I, was a, when I was a kid, I was a tomboy, and I used to climb trees, and... I was the class clown, I was the class comedian, I, that's the person I was. And you can believe that if there was a book called Berenstain, I would have probably made fun of that. I'd probably still be making fun of that today, actually. What, what is, what is this? You guys, this is, this scares me. This is so, I, I can't look at this. It's like a fake, I, I immediately went online to eBay and Amazon, and I started looking up old vintage stuff, right? One of the first things I found on eBay was a vintage Berenstain. I'm not going to say Berenstain. I'm sorry. No one is going to force me to do that. On eBay, there is a vintage lunchbox for sale, and the picture of the lunchbox says Berenstain. But even the comic book store that's selling the lunchbox wrote in the title Berenstain. Or Stein, whatever. It's with an E because we all know this. This is what this can't just be a mass hallucination. I saw a video that someone put up where they tried to explain this away by saying that we just all filled in the blanks in our head with an E because A looks weird. No, there's lots of words that look weird that if my brain just wanted to change the way a word looked so it looked less weird. I mean, there's tons of words like that that we would be changing mentally all the time. This is hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people that are saying, what the hell is going on? I do not remember this being spelled with an A. I called friends and family. We talked to like, I probably talked to like six people straight off the bat just as soon as I got the book out of my kid's room just to ask them if I could, just to see if I could find one person anywhere, one person, just one, who remembers this being spelled stain. Nobody. I couldn't find one person. I don't know anyone who remembers Baron Stain. Ah, you guys. <laughs> Think about this for a second. Do you remember ever seeing an A on any of these books? Do you remember seeing that? And then ask yourself if they're messing with the fabric of space-time. Are we in that scene in Back to the Future where he's holding up the picture and stuff is disappearing off of the film as he's looking at it? It's just vanishing before his eyes. Is that what happened here? Is that what's going on? And... There are still websites out there, educational websites, etc. They spell it wrong. It's a parent or right or whatever you want to say. They spell it with an E. You can find that everywhere. So this is something that I guess we are all just mass hallucinating. I think that's a good point there to cut in. The Berenstein versus the Berenstein bears. Is it just some kind of typing error? What is wrong with people's mass memories? Guys, this was how we were first introduced to something called the Mandela Effect. And what better person to bring on to the show to talk to us tonight about this than Mr. Max Egan, all the way from Down Under. You can visit Max's site at thecrowhouse.com. Max, welcome back to the show. I was going to say it's been a while, but that would be a lie. Yeah, it's actually been about 24 hours, hasn't it? Excellent so, yeah. stuff, Max. Can't get enough of Max Egan. Yeah, thanks for thanks for having me on again. I don't usually come on and do shows like this, but you know, sitting around with cracked ribs, what do you do? You know, 
And this is one of those topics, Max, that, well, when I first came across it, I really did not know what to make of it. And considering I class myself as the love child of Mulder and Scully, you would think this would be right up my street. But I just can't explain this. What's your take on this Bernstein Bears and the Mandela effect? Well, it's it's bizarre. It's it's one of the most bizarre things I've ever come across in, in 40 years, over 40 years of research. This is something that's really stumped me you know like you, you see this and you just go okay well this is this is just super weird you know and and i can understand uh, the clip that you played there the problem that she's having is because she actually went and got the book off her bookshelf that she bought back in the 70s and it had changed from what she remembered it and that's what did it for me as well like, there's so many instances of this happening there's lines that are changed iconic lines in movies that are all changed um like in in, in uh, gone with the wind in forest gump in in uh uh, Wizard of Oz, there's, there's so many things that have changed. Sex in the City, the show Sex in the City is now Sex and the City, and you can find no reference to a show ever called Sex in the City. And all these sorts of things, you look at them online and you think, okay, well, they could have just changed it all digitally the way they do. Like when you look at uh, books like 1984, The Ministry of Truth, they constantly change things. But it would be very difficult to do. The problem I've had is that I can go and get some um, old VHS videos. I know people that still have old VHS video players, I can go and find some of these old movies on VHS and these can't be digitally altered and the, the lines have changed in the movies. And the clincher for me was um, the spelling of Pete Townsend's name because I mean, I'm a guitar player. I grew up in the era when The Who were a very popular band and I know how to spell Pete Townsend's name as well as I know how to spell my own name. And there was never an H in Pete Townsend's name. It was always Pete Townsend, not Pete Townshend. You know, if it was Pete Townshend... It would have been a source of contention. People will be asking, how do you pronounce it? Is it Pete Townshend or Pete Townshend? Well, this is a new one on me, and it was definitely Townsend. Townsend. Well, now there's an H in it. No. So I went, to my, I, went to my, I went to my record cabinet, and I pulled out a Who album. I, I didn't do it myself because my, my dear, lovely ex-wife stole all my albums. But I rang up my son. I said, son, go to the record cabinet in your mother's lounge room and pull out an old Who album. You know, who live at Leeds or, or um, who's next or something like that. And um, tell me how to spell the guitar player's name. And he spelled it for me and it's got an H in it. T-O-W-N-S-H-E-N-D. And when I bought that record in like 1970 or something, it did not have an H on the cover. It was no H spelled on that cover. There was no H in his name. So... It isn't just digital. It's something has changed. Physically, physical reality has altered. And when you look at this, um, how can that happen? You know, there's only really one possible explanation for this happening, for physical reality changing around us, like this woman who's just talking about she pulled out the Berenstein Bears book that she bought back in whenever, in the 70s, and now it's spelt Berenstein, but it wasn't when she bought it. So... Oh. Therefore, physical reality itself has changed. And the only real explanation for it, if someone's got a better one, I'm, I'm open. But the only explanation I can find is that my consciousness is now inhabiting a different physical timeline to what it was when I bought that Who album back in 1970. So something has shifted, you know, and it makes you wonder how many parallel realities are there, how many parallel timelines are there. And it goes a long way to explaining a lot of things. I mean, look at, look at flat Earth research. This also explains why so many people would be finding evidence that the Earth is flat in this timeline, because it may well be flat in this timeline. But is it a matter of simply a few keystrokes or pumping out CERN or HARP or something to shift us in between different timelines? I mean, it's right out there to think about. But this is a, a freaky thing. I mean, something as simple as an H appearing on an album cover or an e, <clears throat> an e changing to an A on a magazine, this may seem inconsequential to people, but, but really it's huge. It, it's huge that, that physical reality can simply change. And you look at Wizard of Oz, you get the movie out, Wizard of Oz. There's so many movies that have done it. Wizard of Oz, the, the part where um, she goes, to, she realizes she's not in Kansas. She says, Toto, I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. Iconic line. Now she says, Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. You go get the movie out on VHS and there's a 16-year-old Judy Garland saying, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. And it was never like that. We know that. Darth Vader, he doesn't say, Luke, I am your father. Now he says, no, I am your father. 
Forrest Gump doesn't say life is like a box of chocolates. He says life was like a box of chocolates. And you can go and get the VHS video and put it on, and that's what he says. But we know he didn't say that. We know it's, it's different. So is these, are these glitches in the matrix? Are these mistakes that have been made? Are there messages in there for us? Is there something, uh, something else going on? You know, I've got a friend um, called Samantha Backman. Actually, I should see if she's online and try to bring her on. She had a remarkable experience where she had what was essentially um, like a crop circle. It was a six-pointed wheel appear on her leg. And uh, then, since then, she's been getting these, these uh, downloads. And the downloads she's been getting have been telling her that this reality is a mainframe that what we perceive to be God has no, it doesn't care about us. It isn't about that. God is a computer program and that God is attempting to uh, recreate itself. And you know, two minds are better than one, seven billion minds are better than two. So this is what she's been getting, which has been really interesting. This is the Camp Baker Show. Welcome back, everyone, to tonight's broadcast of Freaky Friday with me, one of your hosts, Kev Baker. I'm also joined by Joe Joseph, Johnny Whistles, Scotty Lopez, Kenneth Webb, and the one and only Mr. Max Egan. Before we were rudely interrupted by the break, Max was going into the Mandela effect. And Max, I'm going to come back to you because you were just getting into a story about a lady that you know. Yeah, well, she uh, she had a particularly interesting experience where she had uh, this this uh, kind of like a crop circle appear on her leg, and then she started getting all these these weird downloads and visions and stuff. So, and she's uh, I'd like to actually try to find her and see if I can get her to come on the show. If I can contact her on Skype, I'll uh, I'll get her to come on and tell you about it herself. So it's a pretty interesting thing. But what she got was that um, this is a mainframe. We're living in a mainframe, and the God is attempting to. Um, uh, recreate itself um, and that's what our job is it was a quite an interesting download that she she had actually she's just signed on so I might be able to get her on to come and talk to you about that herself but the interesting thing about this like I said I mean seeing digital changes is one thing but um, seeing changes in the physical world such as Berenstein changing to Berenstein on an actual book and the record that I pulled out, you know, the, the name of the guitar player actually been spelled different now. This shows a change to physical reality. And if anyone's got another option, I'm open. But to me, I mean, the only real explanation for this is that my consciousness now inhabits a different physical timeline to the consciousness that it did. And as someone was saying in the break, it may have been Joe who was saying that uh, perhaps it's, it's uh, residual, uh, something that's left over, like when you format a hard drive, there's there's usually, you know, you can still retrieve the data that was left before. So Exactly. Um, it could be something like that's going on here, but this really does indicate that there is a lot more to this reality than meets the eye, and it's, it's a very good indication that this could, in fact, be a hologram. I mean, there's been all sorts of people put out books, the holographic universe, all sorts of stuff, you know. We know that, that consciousness creates reality itself. The, the very physical, uh, you know, the, the physical stuff of consciousness of, of reality is, is really made from consciousness it's made from conscious energy there is no real matter it's simply different different uh, you know atoms vibrating i mean that's all it is like bill hicks said it's simply matter slowed to a, a, a to a slow vibration that's are you all. are you referring are you referring to the electric universe max is that well yeah the it is an electric universe i mean we know this we're electrical you know and, right. and that's all anything is it's all electrical it's all energy the whole thing so Really, anything is possible, and we could create any reality that we believe is possible. I think reality is based on our belief of what it is. You know that, and also, I mean, this should be a good thing for people to get rid of fear out of their lives. I mean, what, what are you scared about, folks? We're jumping in and out of timelines here. There's something far, far more freaky going on than anything we've, we've come across before. And, and this explains so many things. It explains why the Earth could be flat in one timeline and round in another. It could, uh, it could you, know, well, you know, imagine if reality is like a game, like a computer game, and you, know, you get to the edge of the game and it's just black non-programming outside. Perhaps that's what this is. I mean, who knows? Who knows? But um, my argument is that we need, to, we need to establish the freedom to find out. But these sorts of things, I, I think, should go um, very well for helping people drop, drop the fear. I mean, there's no fear of speaking out and calling this system out for what it is, and there's no fear of standing up to want to make some positive change because 
Things like this really open your mind to the fact that reality is simply not what you think it is. Absolutely. Um, I, I got to tell you, the, uh, <laughs> when I first heard Holographic Universe, I was kind of like, whoa, no way. I mean, what a stretch. But <clears throat> I have a you know, quantum kev that guides me from point to point and is able to um, you know, kind of show me the science behind what that means. And then I started to look into CERN, Max, and, and that was very interesting because some of the research at CERN proved that the universe is ordered and not random. And at that point, I was like, wow, holographic universe. You've got an ordered uh, expansion or whatever. You know, Everything is mathematically ordered. You've got things like the golden ratio. It's just, it, it fits, you know, the, that, that the universe is a, actually a hologram. So well, it does. That's the thing. Yeah. It does. Well, and, and that's what, you know, gives credence to this, you know, idea of Berenstein, Berenstain, um, all of these subtle differences in these timelines. And the reason why people still remember things, it, it's an image. That image is always there. It's always going to be there, you know, but sometimes these images can be overwritten or, you know, I don't even know how the heck, Kev, you describe it as what, like, pay, how did you describe these different timelines and everything else? I can't remember how it was. You, you just, you had a very good way of describing it. Well, if you just even think of dimensions like pages in a book. Yes. Different layers of reality. Wow, it's like all, all just separated by frequency. And Max, isn't it interesting at this time we see the Schumann resonance of the planet going up and all of this strangeness occurring? Yeah, yeah, well, that's the thing. I mean, it, it really, really opens up the realms of possibility. Well, look, I've located this, uh, this lady, if I can add her to the call. Oh, please do, to... Max, please do. No, she'll, she'll, be to she'll tell you about what's, uh, what's going on. Let me see, add people where are we oh joe it's just about to get really freakier yeah it's good how's that haggis sitting but listen joe you're american i mean it doesn't really affect myself and johnny whistles or max over the ocean there but the bernstein bears when you first found out what happened were you like mel were you in absolute incandescent fits of it blew my mind there we go Okay, yeah, well, she's coming on. It, it, like, it's really strange. It is really, really strange. And it's, um, it, uh, it, uh, I think she's, something's going on here. She's yeah, I'm trying, trying to find the caller let her, just now. There we go. Let her maybe. It wouldn't work when you tried to call me. I actually had to call you. So, it's Skype. Uh, it's acting real strange these days. You'd think in this day and age we could get something better. Scott Lopez, get on it. <laughs> <laughs> But listen, I'll come to you then, Scotty. Your thoughts when the Berenstain Bears and this Mandela effect. What do you think's oh, happening here, man? Well, that that totally blew my mind. And the uh, Pete Townsend thing just blew my mind, too, because I went to the uh, official website of The Who, and it is changed with an H, and I never remembered it with an H. But, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm around the same age as Mel, so... Uh, I uh, I remember the uh, Berenstein Bears. I remember the cartoon. I remember the books, and it was all spelt with an E. It totally, it still it, it freaks me out. And the one Just, thing I do seem to resonate with people, and not the only one that gets us large swathes of people, but the word dilemma. For me, when I was growing up, it definitely had an N in it. Not anymore. And I know there's people in the chat room were talking about that as well. That's one that Lucky experiences. And I don't know if the timelines are merging. Maybe it is some kind of holographic universe going but, on here. But if it, Kev, think about this. Okay, so if, if, if it's as you say, right, let's just say different dimensions or different frequencies, like a multiplex signal, if you will, and the signals start to get crossed because of this, let's just say the Schumann resonance starts to, things go out of balance and there, there's some distortion there. That would cause the frequency, the wave itself, to kind of interact with each other, phase in and out. What do you think? Possible? Oh, definitely, Joe. Definitely, because just look at the way we see light. We only see a small spectrum of it. 
And right. yet there's all that going on round about us at the very same time. We just don't decode it. Yeah, we can't see it. So I definitely get that. But, you know, maybe I'm biased because I've looked into CERN so much. But when you look at when CERN was starting to actually smash the protons a few years back, pre-2012, you know, this is when this kind of weirdness and things like this all started picking up, guys. And I wonder if there's some correlation between that. I'm not saying there is. Like I say, I think I could well be biased on that one because I've looked at CERN so much. But then when we look at TV shows, well, how often do we see particle accelerators being associated with time travel? We've got The Flash. We've got a program called Rewind, is it, Joe? That yeah. That the nuclear weapon? Yeah, it was. It was, it was cancelled. You know, that's, that's what's crazy. It was a, back in 2013, there was that show. Uh, on Sci-Fi Channel, and no one ever gave a reason why it was canceled. It just never made it past the first episode, and it just went away. But in there, you know, there's footage of an actual device, you know, of that looks very, very similar to CERN. And this thing is spitting out a... Um, like a particle stream, and on, and through this particle stream you see another reality or another time, you know, like an open doorway, a gateway. And in this, I guess, you know, the more that there is a terrorist attack where New York is nuked and they have to use this technology for the first time to go back and save New York. And I guess in this, in this episode, they do, but they use this technology to do it. So it makes you wonder is time travel a possibility? You know? Well, you know, they state in their own actual mission statements that they're playing about with the fabric of space and time. They're talking about creating portals. These are the scientists, not just people like the alternative media using this language. So if you're ripping a hole in space and time, then that really does say to me that you are accessing some kind of temporal, I don't know, how would you even put it? Technology, temporal travel, Joe? Yeah, I mean, it's it basically it's a Stargate. If you ask, it, it it kind of makes you feel that way. You know, remember the the the, the series Stargate. Well, here's the question then: a horrible consequence, or are they trying to fix it, or are they doing this deliberately, or both at the same time? That's or could it be in the Mayan shift that people thought was going to be the end of the world? Maybe the there was a shift. In 2012. That's a very good point. And Max, this has actually been quite profound for you, hasn't it? Because this has made you think a lot about this kind of thing. Well, yeah, it's confirmed a lot of stuff for me. I mean, some of the experiences that I've had in meditation and in ceremony and my experiences of, of the stuff that exists outside visible light and, and how this, this truly is a construct. It's some sort of a construct that we're living in, whether it's holographic, whether it's whatever. It, it's it's not what we think. You know, we, we are not... Uh, in the type of universe that we have been told we are, I really don't think we are. I mean, maybe that type of universe exists outside this construct. I don't know. We can speculate all we like. but um, And how it happened, I mean, I don't know. But I think someone's doing it. I think it's been done for a reason and for a purpose. And time travel could be could be a, a reason. Perhaps people have gone back just to change little things, to experiment, to see. But then if if that's true, I mean, if, if this is one of the paradoxes of time travel, you know, if you were to go back in yeah. time and you were to change Berenstain to Berenstain, then wouldn't we all remember Berenstain from that point on, from where the timeline was changed? I don't know, but if time travel was possible, Max, then... I mean, feasibly, what's time at that point? Once you've conquered time, what is it? What is it exactly? What is time? Time is the fourth dimension. Time, well, according to Pope Gregory, time is, is the time it takes for the Earth to go around the sun, and you get one year older when that happens, according to Pope Gregory. You know, time is something that, that exists because we believe it exists. Uh, I don't think it's linear at all. I think time is cyclic. I think time, you can jump all through time, I think. I think time travel is possible um, just through our own consciousness. I, I just don't think we've, we've, uh, we remember how to do it. I think but I think we have the ability to do, do anything. I mean, I think our creative potential is off the charts. I really do. You know, we're, we're using about, you know, 3 to 5% of our brain. You know, we're experiencing about 2 to 3% of reality. I mean, there's, there's so much more going on that we don't know about. We're using... 
um, like only five senses. We're, we've got so many higher senses that we don't have access to. There's so much more going on here than what we, we realize. So really anything is possible. Really anything is possible. And this should, um, it should open people's minds up to that possibility that anything is possible and that we create reality ourselves and it doesn't have to be the way that it is now. And like I said, I've been looking through this, looking for, for positives. Is, are there messages in there? I mean, and frankly, all the changes that I've seen, uh, apparently, you know, some, some of them are kind of weird, but you know, a lot of the, the major changes I'm seeing are, are sort of positive changes, you know. And even when you look at Forrest Gump, you know, he says life is like a box of chocolates. Well, life was like a box of chocolates. Okay, so that reality was. That reality was. And, and what else are we seeing? We're seeing like in... Um, in Gone with the Wind, she says, you know, uh, Toto, I don't think we're in Kansas anymore, to Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. So what's more positive? I don't think, or I have a feeling. So maybe it's a bad feeling. In other words, Looney Tunes. Looney Tunes, you know, which, these are tunes, T-O-O-N-S, Looney Tunes, these are cartoons. You know, when you, when you, Roger Rabbit, they lived in Toontown, right? These are tunes. And why is it called Looney Tunes now, T-U-N-E-S? And you go and look at the, the cartoons from the 1930s and 40s when it first came out, these old black and white cartoons on VHS, and it's spelled Tunes, T-U-N-E-S. We all know it was Tunes. These are cartoons. These aren't musical cartoons. There's no reason to call them Looney Tunes. But so why is it changed from Tunes to Tunes? I mean, maybe it's about song. Maybe it's about song. Maybe it's about feeling. Maybe it's about not what was but what is. You know, or, or you know, maybe, maybe these sorts of maybe there's messages in there for us. I don't know. Maybe I'm getting conspiratorial about it, but I mean, I started looking at this and thinking, well, maybe there is a message in there. But of course, you don't know how many changes have been made, so where these messages may lie. But um, it should open people's minds up to the possibility that anything is possible, and it should help people put down their fear. Of, of standing up and calling things out so we can make a difference, you know. All of these problems, I think, they give us opportunities to, to step into our own power. I think all of the, the global situation is giving us an opportunity to step into our own power. There's everything we need here to heal the world. And this should let people know that the death is just an illusion anyway. Life is not what you think it is. Reality is not what you think it is. So why are you so scared of taking responsibility for yourself and standing up to make a better world? Because we can turn this construct into whatever we want it to be. We really can. And I think this, this opens people's minds up to the possibility of that. Well, hopefully it does anyway. That's what it's done for me. But like I said, it's the freakiest thing I've come across in 40 years of research. I've never seen physical reality change like that. You know, just, just that, that Who album was enough to really, really, it was a profound thing in my life when I, when I heard that, that Who album and, and my son pulled that out. And there it was spelt with an H. And I know for a fact that it was never, ever spelt that way. This is not a mistaken memory I've got. This is, this is something in reality that has changed. So therefore, reality is not what we think it to be. That's the only explanation that I can come up with. My consciousness now inhabits a different timeline. And you've got to start looking at things like dreams as well. I mean, when we have a dream, is that slipping into another timeline? Is this happening all the time? How, how many times are we slipping in, in and out of these timelines? You, know, you put your keys down on the table and you, you look for your keys. You can't find them anywhere. You swore you put them on the table. You search the entire house. You can't find them. You walk outside. You walk back inside and there they are on the table. Where you yeah, how you many times does that happen? How many times does that happen? You slip in and out of timelines, you know. I went to, to drop something off at a friend's place the other day and I needed an envelope to put it in. I knew I had an envelope in the car, could not find it anywhere, had to literally stop at a shop, go and buy an envelope, walk a block to the post office, buy an envelope, put this thing in it, take it to my friend's house, drop it with his mother-in-law, got home, got up the next day, went into the car, and there is the envelope sitting on the floor of my car in full view that I couldn't find yesterday. This is not something you could miss. This is a big envelope sitting in the middle of the floor of the car, and I actually stopped, pulled over, and searched the car looking for the envelope wasn't there one day was the next so it makes me wonder how often we are slipping in and out of these timelines whether it's got anything to do with CERN whether it's got anything to do with harp whether it's simply the matrix breaking down I don't know but it's a bizarre thing and it explains all sorts of anomalies that we're seeing and I think people uh, people need to look into it it's, it's a profound revelation and once it sinks in it once it really sinks in the, the fact that physical reality has changed it is not 
no longer like what we remember it to be and what we know that it was, it's no longer like that. So what else has changed and what else is about to change? Wow, well, I Looney think, Tunes, Johnny. Sorry, Johnny, but yeah. Looney Tunes, that's just blowing my mind. Yeah, that Looney, it was always Tunes every time I've seen it. The, it's probably the weirdest thing that ever happened to me was actually with one of my cats. Now, this cat won't go near my outside door because it is so frightened. It just won't go near it. But one day I was opening the door and it walked out. This actually walked outside and turned the corner where I couldn't see it. Now, I closed the door and I came in to tell my partner because I couldn't believe that she'd actually walked out the door. And when I came back in, the cat was inside. Now, there's no way possible that the cat could open this door because it's way, way too heavy and you have to turn the handle anyway. But when I turned around, the cat was at my feet. What was it called, Johnny? Schrodinger? No, it was actually Felix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I've, I've done that. And again, the other one with a, a full pack of cigarettes and my keys that I came in from work, put them down on the table, went to get them five minutes later, gone. I've never found them. Never found them. Wow. And, you know, Max, you mentioned death there, and I've never been afraid of death. And then I heard David Icke explain it brilliantly, and he basically calls the body a spacesuit. And we can take that from there. It's a spacesuit, an avatar. And we can go into the computer game kind of analogy for this because I picture myself in a first-person shooter walking through a forest now, you only load up what you need in front of you, but all the code and everything still exists all around you. You just have to observe it. Now, the thing is, can the character within the first-person shooter game at some point become aware that it's just in a game? Is that where we well, are right thing. now? Well, perhaps we are. That's the thing. Perhaps we are. Perhaps we're becoming aware of that. I'm trying to get Samantha on. She said she's got uh, 10 minutes. She can give us 10 minutes. Try that. again and I'll try and add her up. Just um, let her call, though, because I couldn't, you couldn't call me before. Skype was playing up. I had to actually call the group. So um, I'll just add her. But then no if, problem, if the fails, just leave her and uh, we'll get her to actually ring in herself because um, uh, that's just the way it's going to be, I think. Well, you never know, guys, and I'll come to you, Scotty Lopez, because you're a computer kind of guy. We hear people talking about holographic universe code constructs. Do you think there's something to this? Oh, definitely. I mean, uh, physicists have already, you know, proven that, or, you know, that the, the universe appears to be, uh, it looks like computer code. It, it looks like mathematical computer code. And it would explain why math makes so much sense, you know, the golden ratio, uh, you know, geometry, stuff like that, because th there are rules, you know, uh, it, there, there's a construct to it. There's, there's something behind it. Hello, hello. Hey, hey got, there we go, Max. I've got my I'll friend Samantha here. It. There we go. Yeah, mm. my friend Samantha, she had this interesting experience. Can you share this experience you had with us, Sam? We've been talking about the Mandela effect. Remember when I, I dropped that in your lap? <laughs> Okay, well, let me go back to the beginning of it. Otherwise, it doesn't make a hell of a lot of sense. I was gifted a thing called a, an A-port. And an A-port, if you uh, look it up in the dictionary, it's something that is made, uh, usually comes into during a seance. So it's made somewhere else and dropped into this dimension during a seance. And um, I know Max and a, a, quite a few have seen it, and it's, it's definitely an impossible object. It can't be made. It's about 95 years old. And um, a man came up to me over a year ago and gave it to me. He said he'd been waiting for me to turn up and um, I sort of looked at him strangely and when he gave it to me, he said, I knew I had to pass it on and he said, I saw in your eyes that you were the one. Anyway, the day he gave it to me but I, I hadn't sort of carried it around. I'd, I'd had it with me but not carried it close to my body. And the day that I had it, close to my body where it touched my body I actually woke up that morning with a crop circle on me now I call it a crop circle because a, a good friend of mine Ian Crane and I uh, were googling crop circles the night before so 
it was on our mind anyway. This was a six wheel, a wheel with six spokes on it, but there's a strange, it incorporated a freckle. And when I started to do some research on it, firstly, let me go back to the crop circle. It wasn't like anything else. It wasn't made of, it wasn't scratched in, it wasn't, it, it, it was made of skin colour pigment change. So the skin itself had, it had a different coloration to it, like as a freckle, but a freckle, the skin colour change would go all the way down. This was just on the surface. And the strange thing about it is it had a bleeding effect to it. Anyway, a couple of days after waking with this mark, I the only way I can articulate it because it, it, it's the way that it came to me, it's like something else moved into me. There was two entities. One was a voice that I call head office. It spoke from authority. And the other one is more a collection of data dumps, I call it. You know, I get downloads of, of information and this has been uh, nearly 18 months now and it's the, the wisdom that comes through. As I sort of search, I'm a researcher, I have come across similar sayings in um, Jesus' uh, t- t- conversation with the apostles, with the Virgin Mary, um, with the teachings of Philip and Thomas, uh, suppressed information, hidden information. Now, it's not exactly the same, but the meaning is is pretty well the same. So I guess that's a, a good overview. Oh, the other thing was there has been a personality change. I don't like the taste of certain things. There's certain things I don't do anymore. And that was against my better judgment, but something just had entered me and decided that it was going to change my habits. So that's about the short of it, guys. Wow. Now, Samantha, we're going to be going for a quick break in just a moment, but I hope we can steal you for another five, ten minutes on the other side, if that's okay. You'll be lucky to get me for five. I'm actually in clinic and I've got a patient sitting in the waiting room of all, <sighs> of all days. <laughs> I could speak to you all night. This is fascinating. Mm, mm. Well, there's actually a lot, quite a, quite a bit more to it as well. I mean, um, with, with the, I'd like to get to talk about Nostradamus and the 900 women and, and Ooh, this yeah. sort of stuff. If you could. Yeah, well, why don't you go to a break? I'll go and convince my patient that it's there a we go. That they hang on a couple of minutes. Excellent stuff. So, folks, we'll be back in a couple of minutes and let's get back into this. This is getting fascinating. Talk about Freaky Friday. This is the Camp Baker Show. Welcome back, everyone, to hour number two, right here on a very freaky Friday indeed. And good news, everyone, Samantha has been able to hang over onto the other side of the break, so let's waste no more time. Now, Sam, there's a lot more to this story than what you were able to share with us, so I will just hand it straight back to you. Okay, and I speak at a million miles an hour, so let me get it through. It's okay, Okay. I'm Scottish, I can understand you. (laughs) Oh, and I tell you what, I, I sometimes we need a translator for you guys. <laughs> um, okay, so obviously it sent me on a journey to find out what the uh, what what everything meant, what the what the crop circle meant. So I started researching the mark, and um, Ian Crane put me in the direction. He said he had seen it in a magazine or a newspaper out of Poland and um, anyway so we tracked it down and sure enough here is this woman with this exactly the same mark on her neck and exactly the same freckle which is incorporated in it and the discussion had come up that often even with crop circles they use the natural geography of the area to make a statement as part of the crop circle. Anyway I contacted this newspaper and they, it was funny because I wanted to know the woman's email address to find out if there was anything that, you know, she could tell me. Anyway, when I contacted the newspaper, it wasn't the newspaper that got back to me. It was a NASA physicist who asked me um, and she contacted me through the Facebook email and asked me if I'd had any um, paranormal experiences, if I felt I'd seen alien or been abducted by aliens if I had worked for the armed forces, had anybody I was related to work for the armed forces, had I been to England at recent times, would I come in for a DNA 
test, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Anyway, which was really strange. And of course, I spoke to Max and a few other friends, and they said keep away from it. So I didn't get back because it was a weird thing. Anyway, so I never got in touch with this woman. I later was told by someone they put these, they as in whoever they are, um, wanting to find people such as myself. So these stories are fake. They, they, they put the mark up there to see who contacts them. Anyway, still on a journey to find out what the mark went, I ended up with the Anasazi Indians in Utah and I found exactly the same mark with the mark that would represent the freckle. And they had said it was the mark of the people of the stars, the planet of where they were from. So it was their homeland. In other words, the Anasazi Indians' original roots were from this place and that particular marking represented that. I then ended up in the Emerald ta Tablets, the Book of Thoth, where the same sign came up and uh, looked at teachings. And Thoth had said that also this was from another, another place, whether you call it another planet, another dimension, but where the Atlanteans had come from, in other words, their homeland. Now, just a little bit on the Emerald Tablets, you know, some people say, oh, can you believe this stuff? But the thing is, forget what's written on them. The fact is that you cannot mark the emerald tablets. You, we, they've tried diamond drills and saws and everything they can, and they cannot mark this substance. In other words, whatever the emerald tablets are, they are not made of this universe. We do not have the ability to make it. They say it's made through some sort of L chemical reaction and we're not sure what it is in other words it comes from somewhere else too so whoever wrote on them certainly had powers and abilities that we don't anyway jumping ahead I ended up then talking to um, John Anthony West an archaeologist who who knew very well ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics and said a lot of it doesn't say what we think it does. Anyway, we, we went through all that. I showed him the mark and he said, look, I don't really know either, but let me put you on to a woman who was a cosmonaut, a Russian cosmonaut, who went up in space, had alien encounters, and then uh, found that she some alien entities had, had visited her and taught her how to decipher crop circles. Um, the US government uh, paid for her to go and live there for 15 years to um, decipher certain messages which she could do. She's now in her 90s. I couldn't speak to her. I spoke to her two daughters because uh, her English isn't that good. Um, anyway, coming back to that, they had said the daughters um, – uh, that the mother had said, yes, it is a crop circle and it's and how we know the difference is there about 80% of them are fake but those that are are a book. They're both in analogue and digital. So if you look at like a barcode, um, we don't know what it means unless you know how to read a barcode and then it's got a hell of a lot of information within it. So when she saw it, she said, it's a book. You've been imprinted with a book that hasn't been activated fully yet and that um, Nostradamus had predicted the same thing that there would be around 900 women that would show up with these markings on them and the markings that would be activated in other words they'd know fully what the book meant when there was a catastrophe happen and they'd have till the second catastrophe to be able to warn the world now I hadn't mentioned the A-port at this stage uh, to these women and they had said to me we've never seen seen someone with one but in the prophecy it says that if the crop circle or the marking turns up there is an arrow with it well of course I went my blood just went cold and my goose pimples came up because you've seen I've just uploaded a photo the a port that I had been given or passed on to me uh, was an arrow. Now, the arrow can be taken in two different ways. It's either the person with the arrow is pointing the way to go or the arrow is pointing to the woman showing that she is the one that shows the way to go. So, as I said, even Nostradamus had come up with this. Now, 
Since then, whenever I carry this A port on my body for any period of time, an hour or so, marking a mark will come up. I put it under my pillow at one stage and my ear started ringing, so I had to take it out. It doesn't seem to have that effect on others, but it certainly, I guess it's like Excalibur's sword, as the man who gave it to me said, it was looking for its right owner now someone else had told me after touching it that it was mine and I said I know it's mine I just gave it to you and she said no you made this in a past life and you've ensured that it comes back to you to help you awaken um so that's about where I can um finish off with it you know, and oh, ask this, as many questions this as is you like. amazing I mean coming from the UK I've always looked at the crop circle phenomenon and it's so irritating that everyone writes them all off as a couple of guys with bits of wood because, quite obviously, some of them are just otherworldly. There's no way people are doing mm. this during the night. And to hear you talking about this, I mean, you talk about 900 there, Samantha. And with this yes. A-port, that really makes you quite special and unique within that 900. Well, I don't, you know, in all honesty, I don't feel special, you know. And I don't mean that in a kind of egotistic kind of way. You you know what I mean, though. I mean, you obviously yeah. are going to be the one that brings this information forward. Yeah, well, it, to me, it's a bit of a burden. I mean, I've had a good bitch session with, with Max and a bit of a cry here and there, and I think, I don't want this, you know. It's once you've been touched by it, so to speak, there's no going back. In another way, I'm the sort that if there's a fight on, I run towards it, not away from it. So I guess it makes sense that they'd have to have women with courage. But um, it, it, it means that something is pending and it's not going to be so good, um, hence the timing of this, this appearing in my life. Also, with, with some of the channelings, I call them channelings, they're data dumps really, what's happened is... Um, uh, you know, a matrix, a, a virtual reality, all that is very, very clear to me. And I guess if I could sum it up in a minute, the, the way forward is to go within and it's through meditation and getting out of the physical. And when I've, uh, with the writings, that's exactly what they were about. Um, how to, how to, how, how to get out of this dimension, so to speak, find the truth. We've obviously come back and live in this world, but it makes it so much easier to live when you're able to cross over. Now I'm sort of getting into a, a you know, a weird conversation, but I've, ha I've taken up meditation and I never really did before. And it's almost instant with me now. I can close my eyes and boom, I'm there. And it, it, it's I, I get a complete vision and understanding and then it can take me pages and pages of, I mean, up to 17 pages in one case to be able to articulate what I've seen. And I'm not always having what we might call out-of-body experiences. I'm finding most of them are inner-body experiences. So I'm journeying through the nervous system. And that all ties in with the holographic nature of reality because if there is a yeah. holographic thing here, then every single little cell will contain a full picture of everything that exists. And isn't it interesting, when you look down at the atomic level, Max, you actually see what appears to be a planet with, or a sun with planets orbiting it. Well, yeah, mm. give, us your, uh, give us your take on reality, Sam, before you go. Well... What I call head office, which spoke to me, and I call we could call it God only because of the conversation that it, that it had with me, and it came out of the blue, and it literally said to me in a deep voice that was a voice that I heard said, I am not alive. What you refer to as God is not alive. I have created living things and biology, but I'm not alive. I am a system. I am a system and my sole objective is to reproduce myself. Now, that's the weirdest of things to be told. And from then on, I, within after that conversation, I turned my head out sideways. I was outside and I literally saw a matrix or a stream of data coming from every single blade of grass. In other words, I saw 
oh, I can't explain it, and I wasn't on on, on drugs, let me say. Um, it, it was, I could see data streams. It's like when we look at the show The Matrix and you see all this data, your know, ones and zeros. I was actually seeing that. But I could also the, see the individuality of every single piece of grass. It, it, it had its own, it was individual. It was its own, not personality, but... You know, it's like us as humans, we're as individual as our fingerprint and that's what I was seeing. And now and then I see glitches in the sky and and, and um, I, I have a different connection to animals than I once had. I'm very in tune with uh, gut feeling, intuition. So, yeah, I guess that's... Um, and, I mean, there's been a lot. I'm putting a book together which I hope to have ready for February launch on the teachings that I've gotten. At this point, it's around 300 pages. Well, Samantha, I will definitely be having you back on the Kev Baker Show ahead of that book coming out. But, you know, guys, <laughs> 900 women, maybe we do need some kind of return to the divine feminine because, let's face it, this patriarchal system that we've had now for so long, it doesn't really appear to be working. And I just find it fascinating that you bring up a past life there, Samantha, and the fact oh, that you yeah. you knew you had to pass this object on. And that makes me think of Graham Hancock's book called Entangled. And that's the story of two young women separated across time, one in Neanderthal times, one now. And via quantum entanglement, they have to come together to fight a demon in another dimension. And it sounds mm. it's just very, very similar. It's echoes of that to me, and this is just fascinating. Well, that's that, that's exactly what the wisdom is is on feminine. It's all to do with feminine energy. That the the males have completely fucked it up. Can I can I say that? Can you beat me out on that? I'll maybe? wait. I'll wait you off with it because you're so brilliant. <laughs> But they have. They've completely messed it up, and this is where the feminine energy comes comes through. And also the, the cover-ups that way, go way back. I can articulate on that in a way that people will go, wow, we see it for what it is. I'm just not ready to put it out until I get the whole lot to put together as one. But it's it's definitely feminine energy. Yes, yes, you're right. Actually, let me just wow. finish with, I mean, the bottom line is, um, guys, we have the pussy, so we make the rules. And that, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, I, I have to say, and, and, and based on, <laughs> well, you know how each person's, the, it's their individual journey, right? Well, that's my individual journey. That's what I've experienced. So, yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you, Samantha. I totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Did that picture come through, guys? Yes, I got it here. The wooden uh, arrow with the metal bolt around yeah. it. When you look at it, the wood has been x-rayed and, and and scanned. There is no joins in the wood and there are no joins in the washer. And no matter which way you look at it, this could not be done when you actually physically touch it. Holy smokes. That, I mean, this is, <clears throat> Max, uh, th do you say that all of this ties together, you know, the, the Mandela effect, um, would you would you well, say that I'm, all has to do with the fact? That... Go, well, when, go ahead. It was it was interesting when Sam um, came and told me this this story that she's just told you, and this is pretty out there story. And I I know Sam very well. She's a quite a rational woman, and she comes along and she tells me this story, and I go, okay, no worries, Sam. What have you been What have you been doing? You know, and. Um, then you find out about things like the Mandela effect. And then I contacted Sam and I said, hey, Sam, I think I may have found evidence of this uh, mainframe you're talking about. And so, and, and she latched on straight on to the Mandela effect and went, well, yeah, I mean, this is, this is a freaky thing. This is a really, truly freaky thing. And it's interesting. I mean, I saw the mark on her leg. So, uh, and it, it's faded now. It's not there anymore. You know, there was a tiny, you can see it a little tiny bit when, uh, when she got down to show me. It wasn't, wasn't really still there. But um, um, it's just an interesting thing. Yeah, and I think it's all tied together. And some of the experiences I've had in ceremony and in meditation have told me that this is, this is a hologram, this is an electrical universe, um, that, that it's all about consciousness, that there is no matter. It's all based on our perception of, of what we believe is real and what we believe is possible. And so I think, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's pretty out there what she's saying. And, uh, she, and obviously, I mean, she's still trying to figure it all out as well. 
you know. So when, and when she's saying other planets and other dimensions or whatever, it's just somewhere else, you know, that isn't here. So there's something outside this construct that's able to interact with this construct. And we are able to shift, apparently, through, when you look at the Mandela effect, it would indicate that we are able to shift in and out of different timelines within the construct. So, you know, what, what's happening here? Are these clues for us? Or are we changing things ourselves? Or is, is the matrix breaking down? Or what's going on? But um, something, I feel, is about to change. I, th- I think this is a, this is a pretty, uh, pretty important information. I, I really think it is. It may seem insignificant to people, but I think it's quite important, actually. No, I think it. I think it is, and it, to me, it also um, definitely confirms. And this is the other thing too. I've noticed more and more scientists now coming forward and confirming that they believe that it's intelligent design. Uh, yeah, hello. I mean, look at this. Look at how everything's constructed. Look at how, as they get down to l- smaller and smaller particles. How everything is ordered, it's not random. I mean, you can't deny the fact that this is a construct. Whether you like, you, and that's just a word, Max, you know. We can use any other word that might make somebody comfy, cozy, and, and, and feel good about it. But at the end of the day, you know, I like the word construct because to me, that illustrates it the best. Well, it's... It's intelligent design, you know, and whether you want to attribute that intelligence to God or aliens or us or whatever, I don't know. It's up to you, whatever you want to attribute yeah, it to, right. but it, it, it's intelligent design. Right. I mean, you look right. at the fact that everything's based on phi ratio. Everything's based on sacred geometric principles. It's a mathematical construct. It, it, it functions according to mathematical principles. You know, so you know, this, is a, this is a reality, you know, and this is proven by science, it's proven by meditation, it's proven by all different fields that are completely diverse to each other, that it's all based in, in mathematics and phi ratio. So this indicates intelligent design. This is not a random event. Well, Sam is back well, with I, us, and Sam wants to say a big cheerio to all the listeners out there. Sam. Yeah, I do need to go, but just what Max was saying, what I get when I travel... Um, out of body is is what we would call God or head office isn't in my opinion what created us. We've got there's diff there's as many different beings out there as there is that colonize our body. I mean we've got more microorganisms living on our skin than we do skin cells. So there's dimensions of them and the max is right in the mathematical, but the mathematical was made there's a different dimension. We've got different um you know we can talk about analog and digital and we, there's different characters to us. The analog part comes from head office. The digital part is the co-creation with head office of us in, in a in a different way. The book will explain it more, but it, this goes, you know, what I'm seeing, it's, it's, it, it's, it, it's life on top of life and top of life. And if you go in with the dark field microscope and look at a, a living being that's on our body or a living thing, organism, it, it, it's as real to us when you see it there but yet with the naked eye we can't see it so it's not there this is what what is around us it's there it's just not within our sight but we're we're layers upon layers upon layers of different um if you can call them living i mean if you say living then you then you put the opposite that it's dead and it's not like that it's a system it's processes so you could say that we're alive and have processes and so does a plant it has processes but it's not as conscious as we are and oh look i could open up and not stop talking for four hours on this matter and i do have to go guys so samantha um, thank you so much for your time and sharing that with us that was really really epic (laughs) <laughs> Honestly, All right, there's no guys. other word for that. And I mean, this is real Freaky Friday stuff. And we have got Mr. Kenneth Webb joining us. Ken, Mandela Effect. Talk to us, brother. Man, I'll tell you, I, I was uploading a video and uh, it was kind of glitching up uh, Skype and everything. So I had to pop off while that finished. But um, it, I was thinking the entire time about everything all the words changing and all of that it's just, it's totally freaky man i'm telling you it, 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 it's you know it's something that i really gotta i want to look more into for sure but it did totally kind of freak me out <laughs> i was like whoa and one of the ones you actually here. mentioned was the fact that so many people me included throw out the figure 3000 for 9 11 
Yeah, yeah, that's always the case. Anytime and throughout history, it's just going to always be remembered as three thousand people. I'm like, no, it was not three thousand people. It was not three thousand people. So why do people keep saying those things? So how many was it, Ken? I don't know. Three thousand. I don't know. It's two thousand <laughs> nine hundred, two thousand eight hundred, and some. I forget. I forget. All I could uh, first thing that pops into my head: three thousand. Come on, it was, Ken. Get it's it was mass. very close to 3,000. It was something like 2,990-something or something. It was very, very close, I believe, to, to 3,000. Right, right. But rounding it, I just think I think that that's just kind of freaky in itself. It's something that stuck out to me anyway, you know, because like, yeah. that's how it's always going to be. It's like, you know, like those individual lives really didn't matter or something. I don't know. There's something that yeah, strikes kinda, me wrong about it. Yeah, it's kind of disrespectful. It's like, it's like yeah, a dozen dozen eggs, you know. Just yeah, it's, it's kind of disrespectful to do that. They they should uh, say the right number, but it's it's weird. It's it's a weird thing. Like what what Sam's there? I mean, that's going to be so out there for so many people to you know to comprehend what Sam was saying then. And and am, am I saying she's right? Well, no. I'm just putting it out there. I'm just she's a friend of mine. And looking at the Mandela effect with having seen this crop circle on her and and knowing her quite well and having seen the changes in her personality since this happened. Uh, it's an interesting thing, and I think it has bearing. And uh, if if this uh, this Nostradamus uh, prediction of of nine hundred women, and she's finding other women all around the planet that uh, that have this mark, well, I think this is an interesting thing, and it may have some bearing on it all. You know. And yet here we are on the precipice of having something that really is the antithesis of the divine feminine in Hillary Clinton, possibly about to take over the reins in the U.S. Yeah, won't that be fun if Hillary gets the reins? Oh, my Lord. That is the destruction of the divine feminine right there, you know. And we do need the divine feminine to come back. And they've been they've been saying this. I mean, the whole New Age movement has been about, you know, reestablishing the domain of the divine feminine. But unfortunately, it's turned all the men into these fluffy little feminized things as well. And we need the divine masculine to step up as well. That's the problem, you know. It's a patriarchal society, but there's no divinity to it. You know, and there is a divine masculine as well. We are as divine as any woman. So, you know, it, it's a, the marriage of the divine masculine and the divine feminine. We need both, you know, the nurturing power of the divine feminine and the protection and strength of the divine masculine. The integrity exactly. Of the we need masculine. to get that balance back. That is exactly yeah. what we're trying to achieve here. And, Joe, are you back with us now on this timeline? Ah, yes, yes. I ah, had to jump yes. mind for a second, but I'm back. And I hate to say it, but there was nothing exciting over on the other side. But, you know, we were talking about A-ports there, um, Samantha was, and I've seen these things talked about before. I used to look into a lot of the paranormal ghost hunting kind of stuff. And that was one of the phenomena, although I'm sure some of it, a lot of it was faked. But the sheer fact that people talked about these A-ports just materializing out of nothing, fascinating. And I urge anyone out there who hasn't heard this kind of stuff before, Go and look into the crop circles, go and look into the airports, go and look into Nostradamus. And with everything, like we always tell you, go into it with an open mind, because that is the best way. Now, Joe, we're almost up on the break, but Samantha there was talking about plants and bugs and microbes. And we were reading an article today about how they're almost hijacking how a plant works. Oh, my gosh. Yes, that... This is uh, a fascinating thing. And may, when we get back from the break, I, I think we should really get into this and discuss this because if you ask me, this is a game changer. And it has to do with a team that is developing electronic plants. And uh, when you start talking about, you know, uh, organic electronics, that really puts things in a whole light. So we'll talk about that on the other side of the break on Freaky Friday. This is the Camp Baker Show. Welcome back, everyone, to the second half of tonight's Freaky Friday right here on www.truthfrequencyradio.com. Now, Joe, I want to come to you. Is everything okay at your end? Is your internet struggling? It yes, certainly so. seems to be. So what we'll do is, Max, I'm going to pick your brain for a moment here. We were talking about crop circles there with Samantha. What's your take on this? Is Max Oops, sorry, my mic was uh, <laughs> muted. <laughs> there we go. You were on a different timeline. It's cool. Look, 
I don't know. Like it's just a weird thing. That's why I wanted to bring her on to talk about it. I mean, it's a strange thing. And I, I know Samantha very well. She's a rational woman. And I've seen the way her life has changed. I've seen the way her personality's changed. And uh, it's just a fascinating thing. And the, the, whole, uh, the whole prophecy of Nostradamus of the 900 women and all this sort of stuff, I mean, yeah, it's, it's an interesting thing. You've got to keep your mind open to everything. I mean, I like to, like to be open-minded. You know, and, and it explains so much. It explains why reality seems to be changing around us, why things are different. It just explains so many things. So I'm going to keep a very close eye on Samantha and uh, see, uh, see what eventuates from all this because uh, I think it's all relevant, brother. I really do. The Mandela effect, like I said, it's, a, it's the freakiest thing I've come across in 40 years of research. It really is. I mean, you know, you can, you can go down all sorts of rabbit holes, but to see... You know, things that you know, memories that you have, to see that the past is different. And according to this timeline, it's always been that way, regardless of what your memories of it are. That is a freaky thing. And, uh, yes, I'm watching it all with interest. I think and it's, it's, I think it's quite it's, relevant. It's, it's physical changes, like you were saying before, Max. It's not just the collective memory of people. It's actual physical changes. We can go back and look at these old movies, these old books, and they have physically changed and that almost makes me physically sick when I think about it, because that really does have absolutely huge implications. However, we need to flip that, because last night, look at the darkness that we were talking about in the world. And yet if we consider that this is the case, that everything can be changed in an instant, how do we seize upon that, Max? Well, yeah, I mean, it should be, that's what I was saying earlier on. It should be very confidence-inspiring for people. I mean, you, you should put down your fear of death because reality is not what you think it is. You know? And some of the stuff that I've got in meditation, some of the stuff I've experienced, you know, I firmly believe that it's, it's an electrical universe and that the, the fabric of, the, of, of matter is, is compassion. I really believe this, that, that if, you could, if you could translate matter into an emotional state, then it would be compassion because without, if atoms didn't even have compassionate, uh, a compassionate relationship with each other, they couldn't even bind together into, into matter. So compassion is the fabric of the construct itself, and our correct interface with it is, is empathy. That's what I really believe. So I think it's a lesson for us all in this. If we can simply open up our hearts to the people of the world, we can heal everything and we can change it. We can, we can create some freedom, and we can be free to express ourselves and create to our force of our potential. We don't need all these wars. The only reason these wars happen is because we fail to open up our hearts. You know, we're whipped up into a frenzy all the time, like things like what is going on in France. You know, everyone put on the French colours and let's all go bomb Syria. That, that's what it's about. It's about revenge. It's about bombing. It's about hatred and death and destruction. You know, and we've got to stop that. We've got to realise that it's about opening up our hearts. There's other people that have been, uh, I've been talking to elders and shaman, and some people have been telling me that there's only one, um, only one chakra active in our, in our body at the moment, which is our heart chakra. Which is an interesting thing. I don't know how Did true that is. Did we not have is. like seven of them before? Well, yeah, but I mean, I don't know how true it is, but, but this is what I'm hearing from people. And I've actually had three or four people from completely different areas come and tell me the same thing. That what they're finding is that the only chakra that is active at the moment is our heart chakra. And that what is going on in the world, why the world is getting so negative is because it's giving us the opportunity to open up our hearts. And it's just going to get worse until we choose to do it. You know, and this is the problem with the controllers. They're just, they're just ramping it up and they're, they're whipping up hatred and war and war and war when all of this violence should be an excuse to stop all of the war, to stop everything. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, we're, we're just not opening up our hearts. So, you know, I think it's all relevant, brother. I really do. And I think um, it, it should be something people can use to put down their fear. I mean, if you can be shifting in and out of timelines, then, then what's really going on here? The only question you really need to ask from this point on is what is you don't even have to put anything after the is. What is? What is this reality? What is going on here? Because it's not what we think it is. And this is why I don't care about the shape of the construct. I don't care whether the Earth's round, flat, or anything. I don't care. It's, it's not about that. It's about what we do with it. It's about how we establish freedom for the human condition so we can find out what the hell is going on. You know, you can debate whether the world's flat all you want. I mean, you, they've been debating it for thousands of years. You, you're never going to really... Um, get anywhere with that debate until you've got the freedom to, to go and actually find out. And we need to establish that freedom. And these freedoms are being eroded from us uh, very, very quickly. And I think it's because we're failing to open our hearts. You know, Even with all the debate, it's, it's, I've, got no, I've got no problem with flat earth research. My problem is the way um, people uh, treat those who question them. 
it's it's been it's been set up as a divisionist play, yeah, and it's so much animosity, so much hatred. Anybody who questions it is a shill. What is a shill? A shill is someone who is paid to be controlled opposition. When someone's calling you a shill, they're saying you're being paid by the government. Yeah, right. I live in a tin shed here. I'm being paid by the government. Great stuff. Must be a great wage they're giving me. Don't worry about it. I'm getting so, paid by the Kremlin, Max. So it's all good. Yeah, it's it's unreal. That's because so. they only give they only give you two sides to choose from. Two sides. You either with us, you with the terrorists. That's how they push people. You know, the whole well, geoengineering is- of the planet takes and, and makes people choose one way or the other, and it's very extreme. I mean, it exactly. really is. Exactly. And that's what's happening with all of this stuff. You know, it's all very extreme. It's, you, you've got to be with us, and you've got to be with us on every single point, or you're with them. And that, that's the way it's, it's going. It's, it's ridiculous. It can't be that way. You've got to keep an open mind because there's a higher harmonic to all of this. The higher harmonic is, is us respecting each other and, and establishing the freedom to actually find out what's going on. That's what I think anyway. Yeah, we need to think outside the box. That's the thing. Instead of these two uh, sides to pick from. You know, or any of that. These are very extreme views, and you know, no in between. We've got to we got to think outside of the box. I mean, outside of the box is infinite possibilities. I mean, and that's what I think we really do. We need in in the world is for everybody just to get it, just to grab it. That they're being pitted against each other, to divide and conquer all the time, all around the world, and it's really in heavy force now. I mean, today it, it's wow. It, it blows my mind sometimes how far it's gone, and people don't grasp like here. There's, there's two sides. You're marginalizing one side, victimizing another side. You're making both sides dig in deeper and deeper, and making that the only two choices that people have got to make is this or that. You're with us or you're with the terrorists. There's no in-between thinking out that box. And I think that's, if, until we make that move and understand that and understand that there's, you know, seven, eight billion heads, whatever, on this planet that are all different individual irreplaceable beings out there, until we can respect that, man, we, we're just going to let them tell us. Well, yeah, and that's the problem. That that is really seriously the problem. You know, the the lack of respect that we seem to have, and and our, our willingness to keep running down these rabbit holes and not establish the freedom to to actually open up the rabbit hole. You know, I firmly believe that every problem we face has a common has a common cause, and if we address that cause, we can we can take out the whole thing. We can open up all the rabbit holes. You know, the only reason these mysteries exist is because you know we're not free, and we've got a real chance for freedom at the moment. We really do. But we're being locked into a system of slavery very, very quickly. And, but we do have a chance for freedom. We can still turn it around. And, you know, we've had sort of kind of freedom in the last sort of couple of hundred years, but it's been a relatively short experience in the, in the human condition. And we're about to lose it. But we've never had real freedom. Never had real freedom at all. But now the, the, the workings of the mechanism are laid bare. And if we can put down all our stuff with each other and not be extremes, not take one side of the fence or the other side of the fence, realize that this is a world of infinite possibility. I mean, just the fact that the Mandela effect, I mean, just the fact that the past can change, the fact that these things can change shows that anything is possible. It just depends on what you believe is possible. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, if you have, if you have, uh, you know, the, this extreme side, there's got to be the other side. If you've got one side, you got to have the other. So as long as there's bad out there going on, there's going to be good. So I'm not a defeatist or anything like that. I totally believe there's a lot of signs out there for us and everything and that we can, you know, definitely. I, I always can sleep good at night knowing that, you know, there's good people like yourself and all the TFR crew here. And all the people in the chat room, all the people around, you know, and around the world that I've met, that as long as they exist, we will exist. So, therefore, they, and I know they can't win. There's no way that that evil side could possibly win. It doesn't make any sense that it would. Exactly. We're in the most dark of times, but at the same time, we have got so much potential. And, you know, I'm sure people around the world over the ages have all had these inclinations these thoughts but here we are now all interconnected max away down in australia you over in america ken with scott and us here in the uk and we're able to come together and collectively possibly raise that consciousness and it's no coincidence at this time guys that we're all been locked in the mind fear 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 because that keeps us away from the heart 
And that's why it's quite amazing, Max, that you've heard people telling you that it's that heart chakra that is glowing right now. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, and all this is about fear and division. That's what it's about, whipping us up and keeping us angry. You know, it's a, it's a collective projection, this reality, and whatever the collective believes reality is, and that's what reality will be, but the sky is the limit. It's a, it's a realm of infinite possibility depending on what you believe is possible. And when you look at our education system, we're all trained to think in language, so therefore our understanding of reality is based on our understanding of language, and there's no real words in the English language to explain reality properly anyway. So how do we possibly know what's going on? We don't have any real access to the right brain. We don't have any way of really reading the universe energetically or reading reality energetically because we're not taught that language. You know, so we get what we've got. And you know, there's a lot more to it. It's a collective projection. And if we're kept in this fearful reality because of you know, all this, this terror and all this stuff that our governments are foisting upon us, then that's the reality that they create. They know it's a collective projection, and so they keep us in fear. They keep us locked into this timeline that they want to create. But we have the ability to create something completely different if we simply open up our hearts and call things out for what they are. And I've been saying this for years. You know, we just got to call things out. Regardless of the rabbit hole you're going down, now what we've got to do is establish the freedom that we, we need to actually find out. Because I tell you, man, after 40 years of research, you know, people will say, it's this, it's that, it's this, the earth is round, the earth is flat, it's the Jesuits, it's the Jews, it's the, it's the whatever. I can prove to you anything you want me to prove. You know, give me a week to put together a slideshow and a presentation, and the information is out there for me to prove anything you want to believe. But it doesn't make it true. You know, the, the only thing that I can really prove for sure is that we are not free. And we need to establish this freedom so that then we can find out what's going on rather than arguing that we are the one who's found the, the solution. We are the one who's, who's got the key. We know who to point the finger at. And that's all it is. You go down these rabbit holes, you look at this, oh, it's the Jesuits. Now I'm going to stand here and point the finger at the Jesuits and send them hate mail for the rest of the life and tell all my friends about it. I mean, where, where do we go from this point? What, what is it? Now you've found this out. Where do you go? You know, we, we've got to create a mechanism and create something which is going to overcome this system and, and so that we can stand in our power and, and establish the freedom to find out what the hell is actually going on. Because, you know, at the moment, I mean, it's anybody's guess. There's just so many possibilities of what could be going on here. And, uh, you know, we, we've, got to, uh, we've got to establish the freedom to find out before we start claiming anything as a de definite and saying that, you know, if, if you disagree with us, you're a shill. I mean, it's ridiculous, you know. We've got to put all this stuff down. Everybody's got a piece of the puzzle. Let's bring it all to the table and respect each other and establish the freedom to find out. Wow, well said. Joe, are you back with us? No, he is not. <laughs> so then, I will come to you, Johnny Whistles. What do you make of all this? You're listening to Max talking here. Amazing stuff tonight. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. And, and as you said, we really should be able to make our own reality, as you say. Open up your mind. The limits, there isn't any. Do you know what I mean? It's endless opportunities if people just go for it. Do you know what I mean? Instead of worrying about what may be happening in uh, the next year or the next three weeks, it doesn't make any difference. The thing is just to get on with it and start looking up and start making things round about you better instead of just worrying about it or moaning about it. Exactly. Be the change. Many times do we say that on here, and we are literal antennas. We can transmit a better frequency. And talking of being on the frequency, Joe, are you back with us, man? Is this, is this uh, Freaky Friday? Can I just Am ask I you, is the Elvis president where you are? No, it's... Uh... You're still with us, man. Okay, good. <clears throat> did did you guys happen to, in my absence, uh, talk about the electronic plants? No, I managed to steer us away from that, but that, oh. that, that's a good place to go. Well, the, the thing that I find so interesting about this is the fact that they're electronic plants. <laughs> I mean, that's nuts, dude. This is taking things to a whole new level. And um, I, I don't know, man. Researchers at Linköping University in Sweden have created analog and digital electronic circuits inside living plants. Yeah. The Laboratory of Organic Electronics. Kev, I'm going to stop there. 
Did you know that there was a laboratory of organic electronics? <laughs> I'm still trying to get over the photographs I seen of this earlier on. But, Joe, in your absence, we were on about how we're on the cusp of such great things right now. Right. And, you know, technology, it's the same as the balance we need to find between the feminine and the masculine. There's yes. good and bad with technology. And I think this here could be the kind of game changer we need to look at. Because we need to look at the natural world around us and how these other systems operate so brilliantly. And what they're doing is they're basically going inside the plant and they're trying to hijack how chlorophyll actually transfers or transforms sunlight into energy. Right. Now, this is the kind of thing we should be talking about, no? Because right now, if you're watching the mainstream, you're being bombarded yet again with more terror threats coming from Belgium this time. When really we should be looking at this kind of stuff, we should be trying to improve the world, trying to make it better for everyone, not divide them. Especially because the root cause behind terrorism is global warming. Did you use root for a pun? I did. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I mean, this, this has some far-reaching implications um, for the good, you know, um, because if we can get this whole energy, you know, this energy transference, you know, being able to, to, to create energy from, you know, the, the sun – the way a plant does, it's really going to revolutionize things. But also, Kev, you know, it's not far to then think about energy to matter conversion as well. And when you do that, then you've really got a free humanity moment because you have absolutely no reliance on anybody for anything, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Because you just tea. Absolutely. Wait, but how often do we look at these kind of free humanity technologies? And they get occulted away from us because the system and the rulers that we're under right now, we need to change all that before we can have any hope of turning this round and flipping it. I was, I was just about to say that, you know, how, how long do you think it'll be before this is suppressed or um, some sort of a corporation or something gets a hold of it and uh, that's it, that, you know. Exactly, and we so, talk about Dr. Craig Vetner on this program, Max, and he's the guy that cracked the human genome, and he's also the guy that's on about tweaking humans and genetically modifying us. And here we are talking about us being on the cusp of something really, really great, and yet they want to take this avatar, this spacesuit, whatever you want to call this body, and they want to alter it, augment it. What's going on there? Well, yeah, I mean, they do. They want to be out of control. It is what they want to do. Um, they're setting up artificial environments. Well, I was out of the room there when uh, Joe was talking, unfortunately. I had someone come to the door. But um, are you talking about um, some sort of technology or something, some modification that's being made which will enable um, human beings to basically photosynthesize? Is that what you're talking about? It could eventually mm -hmm. lead to that, but they're yeah. basically trying to dress it up. The public faces, they just want to look at that energy conversion to use that yeah. for humans, obviously. Yeah, well, they've been talking about this sort of thing for, for a while. Um, of course, they're, they're talking about a military application for, you know, it'd be great for soldiers in the field because they, they wouldn't need um, feeding and all this sort of stuff, you know. So, you know, all of these things, I mean, I, I personally think that uh, the human body is a, a pretty perfect thing. Uh, I, I don't think we need to mess with it. I think it's an incredibly advanced kind of, you know, biological analog system, analog sort of base computer system. And, um, you know, we, we just inhabit this vessel. I, I think it doesn't need any modification or enhancement. Right. You know, I think, I think that we're here to experience the, the world from our perspective and to take that information with us back to whatever it is that comes after, back to the mainframe, back to source or whatever you want to call it. Um, I think all of these technologies are, are dangerous. I think there's this, this will that we have that we, we have to live forever. You know, we've been, we've been, taught to fear death and that it's, it's, it's you know we've got to do everything we can to live forever that and death has almost been treated like an illness or a disease you know like the signs of aging they they do all these things and say oh you know we're, we're bringing in drugs to um prevent this and to stop this and all different signs of aging are now being classed as different diseases and so they bring in medication to deal with this you know and, yeah. and it, it's it's ridiculous you know it's ridiculous it's, you know it's a it's a big it's a big business 
you know, because they play off the fear vibe. But one yeah. thing Max, that, that I find and, and that I've kind of made it my uh, standard operating procedure is if they tell me to feel one way, I look the other way because chances are that's how I should be feeling or that's where I should be looking. And, well, yeah. Uh, yeah. And this is you, no different. to do that. Yeah. Yeah. This well, it's, is, like, it's, like, it's like George Carlin said, you know, you've got one basic rule in life. I never, ever believe anything the government tells me. You know? Absolutely. So this has some far-reaching implications. Some for oh, the does. good. Yeah, you know, and I think it could very well benefit humanity, but I have to agree with you that well, the it, human body, we shouldn't be messing with it. Well, we don't uh, need to. That's the thing, you know. Right. We don't need to. The, the, there's nothing wrong with technology, and these sorts of things could be beneficial. It could be great. I mean, you know, I've got right. no problem living a couple hundred years. But, you know, like, um, there's nothing ever, ever wrong with technology. Technology is wonderful. The only thing that could ever be wrong with technology is uh, what is it going on in the mind of the hand who controls the technology? That's the problem that we face is that this technology has been created by people who simply don't have our best interests at heart. And if you think that they do, well, exhibit A, the earth. Have a look at the place. Right. You think these greed. people actually care about us? No. You know? They care about All greed. The saving the greed, yeah. Yeah, all of the technology and all the advancements that they're offering us are simply advancements for themselves. They're different ways they're giving to enhance ourselves, which gives them the ability to be able to control the general population more. That's the problem, you know. We, we've, lost, um, we've lost contact with, with what our relationship with government is. We're, we've got this terribly abusive relationship going on with government, and, and we, we've forgotten that. We, we've forgotten that they're just people. They're people we employ to look after things for us. They're our servants. They're not our rulers. We don't have to do what they say. They have to do what we say. And they're, they're enacting all this technology and all this stuff to further consolidate their power and to make their slavery system more functional and more streamlined. And we've got to call it out. We've got to call it out. I mean, it'd be easy to do if we can just, again, put down our stuff with each other and, and respect each other. I mean, there's so many people who've got so much information now, but they're all fighting amongst each other because someone has a different opinion to them. Yeah, and of course everybody has a different opinion because they have a different perspective. They're a different person. They're a different human being. They're a different experience. You know, everybody has a different perspective. No one's ever going to see things completely the way you do. And it's the same for everybody. But we've got to respect that and realize that if we can put all of our minds together and just put it all on the table and look at all of it with an open mind and respect each other, then we've got a solution. You know, but it's up to us to do it. Respect is the first step, you know. Absolutely, guys. Now then, exactly. Joe, you've got a bit of a lag going on there, but Ken, yeah, you jumped in there. What do you think of that, man? Exactly. It, you know, it's the it's, like you said, the search for immortality, vanity, sanity, plain and simple yet complex. Our thoughts on on my mind reflex. Let me know we've been hexed even before we were born. Our innocence torn, our souls worn. A degree of false evolution against nature's constitution. Therefore, I struggle to find a solution, a revolution. But I quickly go weak as I start to peak and must conclude and plug the leak to focus on being alive, breaking from the battle I strive to focus on the things that drive me in the first place. Tranquility with the agility to recognize the facility that surrounds the feeling of life that be the simplicity of a tree, the feeling of life inside you, inside me. So excuse me if I get pissed at the rationalizations of their manifested nations that forsakes all creation. I will not change the station while they finish their masturbation of the world. Mr. Kenneth Webb, and that is what Freaky. makes you such a star over on the old YouTube. And how is YouTube going these days, Ken? Because I'm hearing a lot of channels talking about lots of censorship going on. And again, no coincidence it's happening at this critical time. Uh, no doubt. It is, and it seems to get more. That's why, I, 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 you know, it doesn't matter Republican, Democrat gets in office, but I really hope a Republican gets in there just so YouTube will lay off the censorship because they, they're they really, I mean, seriously, they're so left, it just makes me sick. It makes me sick. They've taken videos down, did all kinds of stuff to me, and then sitting there talking about, well, we'll have it here, but we can't do this or that with it. You can't have these certain options on video. Just for years, it, ever since Obama got in office, I swear. They loved me when Bush was in office and I was banging on him, you know. <laughs> there we go. Is Joe back with us? Through I the think so. <clears throat> Do I sound better now? Absolutely. Oh, oh gosh, man. What Welcome a back, nightmare man. of a night. I tell you. 
I, Max, I, I can tell I can tell you personally, I feel for you when you have those internet problems or the, the troubles like we were experiencing last night. I, I've got that bug tonight, so apologies uh, for the intermittent internet. Yeah, that, that just happens to me. It just drops out now and then, always at an important time. A couple of weeks ago, I had the internet drop down for three days. Someone reconfigured our modem or somehow oh. our modem got reconfigured. It looked like we were online and everyone could see me online. And everyone's sending me Skype messages, but I couldn't access anything. I couldn't surf. I couldn't access Skype. And I'm ringing up the phone company, and they're saying it's all good. You're online. And it took like three days to locate the phone. So that was an interesting thing. It just yeah, man. It's crazy. This is the Cam Baker Show. Welcome back to the final hour of Freaky Friday, right here on your number one network, www.truthfrequencyradio.com, where we give you protection from deception. Now, Max Egan is going to be leaving us, but before you go, Max, I know you've got a few little Mandela effects to throw out there to the audience, and I just want to thank you so much for your time over the past two nights, personally and on behalf of the network and on behalf of all the listeners out there. I've had several emails today thanking me for getting yourself and Christopher Everard on last night, and that was just an amazing breakdown of the whole Paris affair. The history, the funding, the whys, the whos, all of it, Max. Thank you so much. Oh, it's a pleasure, brother. Absolute pleasure to come and talk to you. And uh, it's it's good to come and do a show like this. I mean, it's good to look at some of the really out there stuff. But yeah, yeah this Mandela effect, it's it's interesting. There are so many things that have changed and things that are iconic memories. Um, like even the show, uh, the TV show Sex in the City. I don't, I don't ever watch that show. I've, I don't even own a TV. But even I know the show is called Sex in the City. It's always been called Sex in the City. Now it's called Sex and the City. And you can go looking back through the archives and you will not find any reference to a show that was ever called Sex in the City. There's another movie called uh, Interview with a Vampire. It's just now called Interview with the Vampire. Um, there's all sorts of stuff. There's uh, one of the first cartoon ever made. The, the first feature-length cartoon ever made was made by Walt Disney and it was Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And the iconic line in Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs is Mirror, Mirror on the Wall, who is the fairest of them all. You can go and get that cartoon... <clears throat> Go and get it out now on VHS video and check it out. And she says, Magic Mirror on the Wall, who is the fairest of them all. I know. Yeah, yeah, it, it's true. It, it's true. Um, for, like I said, Forrest Gump, you know, it's, it, life is like a box of chocolates. It's now life was like a box of chocolates. Um, yep. th- and there's so many other things. That I don't, I'm not familiar with the show um, Mr. Rogers, but many American people are familiar with the show Mr. Rogers. And it was not part of my childhood, so I'm not familiar with it. But many people remember a song that he sings at the start of the show that says, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. And now, if you look at that old show, he says, it's a beautiful day in this neighborhood. So things have changed. Snuffleupagus from Sesame Street is now Snuffleupagus. It's never been Snuffleupagus. It was all about the fluffy Fs, you know, Snuffleupagus. What the know, hell are you doing to me, Max? My brain yeah, was, running out of my ear. I don't know. What? This is what? this is what's going on. You, you'll find that um, any photograph you find of Adolf Hitler, he now has blue eyes. Adolf Hitler, as far as I knew, always had brown eyes. Now he's got blue eyes. For people who are, are familiar with the show The Twilight Zone, the old black and white TV show The Twilight Zone, it was written by a man called Rod Sterling. Now his name is Rod Serling, and it's always been Rod Serling. Like I said, Looney Tunes is now Looney Tunes. Uh, Proctor and Gamble is now Proctor and Gamble, and it's always been Proctor and Gamble. Things like this, it's just what was, very, the, what was, the, Proc- very, what was the Proctor and Gamble again? Proc- Proctor and Gamble was Proctor, was always Proctor, mm-hmm. T-O-R, Proctor and Gamble, and now it's Proctor and Gamble, T-E-R. And you can find that. It makes, it, it makes you Gamble. want to contact them. It makes you actually want to contact all these people and go like, hey, actually, what happened? Well, this is, well, this <laughs> is the thing. You can contact Pete Townsend and say, when did you put the H in your name? And he says, what are you talking about? The H has always been in my name. You know, because that Pete Townsend comes from this timeline, I would suggest. I mean, what can I say? It's just bizarre, you know. Freaky. Uh, 
yeah, there's there's some really really strange things that that have gone on, and um, you know things like we've got a universal donor now. How is there a universal blood donor? How can you have some person whose blood will work for all people? Have you ever heard of that before? That never used to be the case. No, you always had to have the correct donor, type A, type B, type whatever, you know, type O. I remember, well, yeah, O, O was was the universal, you can use like... You can't can't put O blood into into a a B negative, O positive into a B negative person. But no, no, got, it has to be like a positive to a positive, right? Well, now you've got a universal donor. We've got universal donors now. Uh, where, where did these things come from? Uh, um, GMO. Yeah, we oh, wow. just got to wonder about this sort of stuff. And for some people, um, how, many, how many states do you guys remember being in the United States? Someone from America. How many, how many do you remember? I'll ask, I'll ask you, Kev. How many states in America? 50. 50. How many do you say, Joe? 52. 50. 50. 50. 52, John says. Yeah. I always, I always got taught 52 when I was a kid. I was taught 52. Now this ah, 52. That's quite interesting because these are probably around a similar age. Mm-hmm. Well, it's ah. an interesting thing. See, there are so yes, many things that are little, little changes that, are, that have, have just changed. Smokey the Bear is now Smokey Bear. Um, but you can find references to Smokey what? the Bear. Same with Barry Stink Bears. You can find a reference. No, nah, they ain't do that. To, come on, man. <laughs> yeah, they, could have, they could have just changed it. They could have just changed it because you can still Google Smokey the Bear and you'll get search results. But if you Google Pete Townsend without the H, it will correct you and put the H in there. If you Google sex in the city, it will correct you and it will change it to sex and the city. If you Google Snuffleupagus, it will change it. It will put a P in there. Because sex there and the city thing. doesn't even make sense. It's always no, sex it in the city. It's always been in. It's the same as that field of dreams where it was always build it and they will come. It's like a baseball stadium. Now it's build it and he will come. Why on earth would yeah. you build it for one dude to come? Exactly. So, And these, these changes of these iconic lines are, are, are significant. They are. But what is more significant is when you're finding these changes in, um, in reality. Like I said, when you go and pull out that Who album and suddenly it's got an H on it, when that young girl or whoever you had on at the start of the show, that, that woman was talking about going and pulling out the book from her childhood that she bought in 1970, that, that it was changed. The spelling was changed on that physical book. That is what is significant about this whole thing. But there's so many of these changes. There really are. And I, I challenge people, go out and find old VHS videos and see if you can go and find an old book of Snow White. I mean, I'd love to find someone with a book of Snow White, the actual Snow White story. I think it was Grimm's Fairy Tales or something. Um, I'd like someone to go and find an old book from the 1930s or 40s and find that story and see if it says Mirror Mirror in the book or whether it says Magic Mirror in the book. Those sorts of things are uh, the sort of stuff we need to be looking at and just... Because if, if you can find it and it says Magic Mirror, then, then again, this indicates that your consciousness is now in a different timeline to what it was. You're in a different reality to what you were. So why have fear about anything? Why have fear of standing up? Why have fear of calling things out? Because this is not what you think it is. This construct is not what you think it is. It's not what anybody thinks it is. And anybody who tells you that they know and they have all the answers and this is what's going on is a fool. They really are. We don't know what's going on. The, the only thing we can really be confident of knowing is how little we actually know. But, but what we can be certain of, that things are certainly not what we are being told. Well, Max, I just have to thank you again, and you've given us so much to think about. Johnny Whistles is scooping his brain up as we speak. But, Max, one more time, we can find your work at thecrowhouse.com and is it fullcircle.net? It's uh, fullcircleproject.net. That's, that's what we're putting together to try to link everybody up. You know, we need action groups right around the planet. Everybody's got their little movement that they're doing or whatever, and you, and you need a support group around you. We'll go and log on to Full Circle Project, find people in your area and start, a, start an action group, and let's start going for the throat. Let's start addressing the root cause of the problems that we've got on this planet, which is the abusive relationship that we have with government, you know. But uh, we, we've got to find a mechanism to, to link ourselves up and coordinate some sort of a response and to be able to communicate with each other, to let each other know what's working and what isn't working and what, what we're doing this week and how people can be involved. And you know, that's what it's about. It's about trying to create grass fires all around the planet of awakened and, and united and linked up people 
we can all uh, turn and turn and face this system and call this out and, and take us in a different direction. You know, it's time. It's time. You know, it's an idea whose time has come, and the idea is freedom. And I think we have an opportunity to do it. And that's what Full Circle Project is about. And that's uh, fullcircleproject.net is the website for that one. You'll find a link on the crowhouse.com anyway. Absolutely amazing, Max. Thank you so much. My pleasure, guys. Pleasure to come on and talk about this uh, freaky stuff. I'm glad you enjoyed uh, Sam on the show too. I'm glad you enjoyed Sam. She's an interesting character. She's uh, someone you should have on. She'll, Max, uh, I'm going to shamelessly on. add her and I'm going to have her <laughs> on any time. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, she, she's a pretty amazing woman. She'll, uh, she'll give you a run for your money, I'll tell you. She'll have you laughing out the other side of you. Um, you'll, be, you'll be falling off the table. She's, a, she's an ex-comedian, so um, ex-stand-up comedian. She brings a lot of that to her discussions. I've done a few uh, conferences and lectures with her. She has the audience in stitches, you know, and while bringing them information which is incredibly enlightening at the same time. And I think that's still. so powerful, Max, because it brings down the barriers. If you can get somebody laughing, then you can actually convey a message far more powerfully that beforehand maybe they wouldn't even have heard. Yeah, and there's not enough women out here on the front line. There's not enough awakened women that are out here on the front line making a difference, and, and Sam's certainly doing that, so it's good to support her, and it's great to introduce her to you. And I urge everyone okay, to check out Max's work and definitely get on board the Full Circle Project, because during the week here, especially on the KBS show, we try and decode this matrix reality. We look at all the darkness, all these events, and a lot of people are looking for solutions well, here's one idea that I think we should all take a good long look at. Again, Max, thank you. And we are going to crack on with our Freaky Friday. I just, what in the hell is going on here? He asked me, do you remember the Berenstein Bears? And I, yeah, of course, I remember them. I, I still have one of the books in my house. How, how do you remember it being spelled? Well, that's easy. It's B-E-R-E-N-S-T. E-I-N, Baron, Berenstein. Not anymore, you guys. It It's not Berenstein. It's apparently Berenstain with an A. Look at this. Look. Look at it. Do you see that? What the hell is going on? Look. What? I'm sorry, but I have not... I have not gotten over this. It's been two days and I'm not over this. That looks so weird to my brain. My entire physical being does not want to accept this. Just doesn't want to accept it. And I flipped inside the thing. Because I, I ran into my kid's room and I went, it's Berenstein, obviously. This is just silly, right? No. Down here in the copyright information... This book right here, which is from 1971, copyright, Stanley and Janice Berenstain. Berenstain, what is going on here? I have lived my entire life in a world where there was no such thing as a Berenstain bear. Are, have we entered... Like an alternate reality? Is this a glitch in the matrix? Is this the multi universe, multiverse, multiple dimension theory? Like, what in the hell is going on? Sorry about that. I'm gonna, I'm bringing it back down. We're, we're coming back down. I'm going back to my center here. When I was, a, when I was a kid, I was a tomboy and I used to climb trees and. I was the class clown, I was the class comedian, I, that's the person I was. And you can believe that if there was a book called Baron Stain, I would have probably made fun of that. I'd probably still be making fun of that today, actually. What, what is, what is this? You guys, this is, this scares me. This is so, I, I can't look at this. It's like a fake, I, I immediately went online to eBay and Amazon, and I started looking up old vintage stuff, right? One of the first things I found on eBay was a vintage Berenstain. I'm not going to say Berenstain. I'm sorry. No one is going to force me to do that. On eBay, there is a vintage lunchbox for sale, and the picture of the lunchbox says Berenstain. 
But even the comic book store that's selling the lunchbox wrote in the title, Baron Steen or Stein, whatever. It's with an E because we all know this. This is what? This can't just be a mass hallucination. I saw a video that someone put up where they tried to explain this away by saying that we just all filled in the blanks in our... Time monkey. Uh, Timothy, and last but not least, Kev, Wiggly Get It. Absolutely fantastic. And tonight we are going to be joined by a very special guest indeed from all the way down under, Mr. Max Egan. No, you've not got deja vu, folks. However, that is going to become so apt and relevant as the night progresses. But before we go anywhere, I've got something to deal with here for a friend and a past guest on the Kev Baker Show and somebody that we all know and love dearly. And this is from Ben Fellows. Now, Ben is under a lot of attack right now, and that really shouldn't be surprising to any of us considering he came out and he named and shamed the establishment and he even had the audacity to go and win in a court of law. Well, the harassment continues, unfortunately, but Ben and Jackie, who are travelling right now, have asked me to put out the following statement on their behalf. So, here we go. I am saddened to learn of all the hate and anger which has been generated by trolls, informants and shills on the internet regarding my trip to see the Dalai Lama in India. I am not on holiday. I am going to see the Dalai Lama to raise awareness for victims and survivors of child abuse as the United Kingdom is intent of covering it up and discrediting any individuals in the press. When our government and press fail us, we have no choice but to seek guidance from a higher authority. And it seems that the Dalai Lama and the Buddhists are one of the few religions not knee-deep in scandals themselves. So I am currently travelling across Turkey to hopefully take a flight next week to New Delhi. I have travelled across Europe to keep the funding of this trip down to a bare minimum as we are relying on generosity, kindness and support from our friends and the general public. Now these trolls have caused us a great deal of damage. Our GoFundMe page has been suspended, my Facebook account has been disabled and we are suffering under a barrage of threats and intimidation. Why is it so wrong to speak out about child abuse? We all understand by now that it's going on in politics, the entertainment industry and the wider community, and has done for many years, in fact decades. The government is busy covering it up, so why is it wrong to keep raising awareness for victims and survivors? That's why I spoke out originally, not for myself, but for all of the other victims and survivors who were too afraid to come forward. So here we are again. We should all be up in arms regarding this issue. They can stop our funding and I will walk all the way to India. They can harass and intimidate me and I will still fight on. I will never stop until we have safeguards in place for our children and support for both the survivors, both past and present. Everything they throw at us makes me stronger as child abuse is a clear-cut case of good versus evil and right versus wrong. The Dalai Lama is a wise and intelligent human being who I, discuss, who I will discuss the issue with and hopefully bring the world's press attention back to where it belongs, the victims and the survivors of child abuse. If the Dalai Lama... Yeah, I just, I just want to kind of echo what Joe said. You know, If he was able to stir up that much... Um, trolling and and hate and discontent yeah yeah then he really hit a chord and uh he's on target so right absolutely okay kev all you buddy absolutely and we're just about to bring mr max egan onto the show but to set up this segment we're going to play a quick video now some of you will have heard of this before some of you won't and this is more relevant to our american listeners than anything else because when I first heard of this, well, it didn't really make much sense to me. And I wish I hadn't scraped the surface, because what you're about to hear tonight is going to blow your mind. But Joe, this all came to light with our friend J.D. Moore and something called the Berenstain or the Berenstain Bears. Stupid Berenstain Bears, dude. Stain. Will we listen to our sister, Melissa Dykes, break it all down for us? 
That would be lovely. Absolutely. B is not a news broadcast. I just want to warn you up front that what I'm about to talk to you about may cause your brain to ache and then slowly feast upon itself much the way that hypodermically injecting about a dozen Slurpees directly into your skull might. So if you start to feel a warm trickle on your cheek, that might actually be your brain. I can't believe I'm doing a video on this. This information was sent to me two days ago, and I am not over it yet, and so I'm going to have to talk to you guys about it. I, I don't know what to do with myself right now over something that seemingly should not be that big of a deal, and yet somehow it really is. Do you remember the Berenstein Bears from when you were a kid? I do because the B book was one of the first books I ever learned how to read. And I remember reading it with when I was about two with my mother. I remember this very clearly because it was one of my favorites. And even once I got too old because it's such a simple book, I still... My mom was so good at telling stories and reading books and I, I kept wanting to read it even once I was too old to, to really read it because it was one of those sentimental things and I kept my copy from my childhood and I read it to my kids and I have very vivid memories of the Berenstein Bears books. It's one of those vivid visceral memories from childhood that I have and I remember thinking to myself, how do I pronounce this? Is it Berenstein or Berenstein, like Frankenstein? Now, flash forward to two days ago when I was sent a bevy of information from a very nice guy named Jason on YouTube. Very well researched, has a whole playlist and a whole bunch of information, and that is going to come in future reports once I've had a chance to fully die. It's not available when I get there then I will wait until he is available to see me. Love to every victim and survivor in the entire world, and the fight continues going beyond the fear. And that is from Ben Fellows and Jackie, who are currently travelling, as I said, right now. And Joe, I received messages today. A few of my other guests who have had on, Ben, he received messages of hate and harassment aimed at Ben. And like I said before I opened up that segment there, we shouldn't really be surprised, Joe, when somebody like this is the target for a sustained trolling and abuse attack. What, what's the old saying? You know, you're catching flack. That means you're closer over the target. So, I mean, obviously he struck a chord. There's a track record of pedophilia and um, shenanigans going on. You know, not just, you got to remember, this is not a UK thing. It has a lot of focus in the UK because you've had some high profile cases come out recently, but this is a global epidemic, if you ask me. Uh, and the people that are harassing him, you know, their bosses or the people they support or whatever you want to call them, are the ones that, that think that it should be almost like a, um, I don't know what you'd call it, like almost like a religion. That it should be respected as such, you know, almost like a religious ritual or, or perhaps we're, even we're like the, a marriage, you know. Yeah, we're the weirdos, Joe, for not thinking right, it's right. right. That's the way they frame it. But that's that's the problem, you know, is that that's not the case at all. And, you know, Johnny, uh, we, we've we we're all born with this sense of right and wrong. We all know it coming out, you know, as 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 children, we understand the basic concept of that. And I mean, dude, I don't care how old you are, or what time period you grew up in. That's just wrong, dude. <laughs> it's wrong. Yeah. yeah that, I mean, this is why we, we have to get Ben Fellows word out there because when people start to realize what kind of society that we're living in, that somebody has to leave their own, their own home, their own family, their country, because you win a court case. That, is that to me just blows my mind, Joe, and I, I just hope that people see 
what's happening. And the more we talk about it, obviously, the more the people will hear it. So, And Ben is no more or less important than any other victim out there. It's just that I personally met the guy and I really connected with him on that day and I still have to this day. And I'm still 110% behind this guy. And I can't make any of you guys out there support him. But trust me, this is somebody that, well, if it wasn't for people like him, these perverts would be able to carry on. So and, you know, there's, there's power, Kev, in the power of the individual. And that's something that you have to understand and you have to harness. And it's something that Ben is doing. You know, he, as one person, one individual, is striving to make change within his sphere of influence. And your sphere of influence is as big as you want it to be. You know, it, it yeah. really is. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be out there. A massive warm welcome to this, the Freaky Friday Show, right here on www.truthfrequencyradio.com, where we offer you the very best of protection from deception. And what a Freaky Friday we have got lined up for you. But before we get anywhere tonight, let's get the Woo Crew out of the way. Awesome chaps we've got. Johnny Whistles, Joe Joseph, and the one and only Scotty Lopez joining us. I'll come to you first, Scotty. Is this your first Freaky Friday? Uh, no, I was on last Freaky Friday, I believe. Yeah, Maybe. yeah, you missed that, I guess. I guess you didn't didn't see old Scotty. See, there you go. We're, I'm on a different timeline, Joe. <laughs> you missed my deliberate bloody joke. Yeah, no, no, no. It's all good, man. I didn't miss it. No, I, did. playing, I missed I it. Playing, <laughs> you certainly <laughs> did. Ain't no doubt about it, man. I got to tell you, man, you missed it. You missed it. Like a mouse. There you go. So. Did you enjoy last night, though, Joe? Oh, my goodness, dude. Talk about it's a It's a treat to be able to discuss these kind of issues with people like Max Egan and Chris Everard because they do so much research into the, the you know these very important topics. This, of course, being you know Paris and of course, Max Egan done, uh, has done a lot of activism, you know, with the Palestinian uh, effort. And, you know, gosh. So what what an awesome opportunity to be able to, to, to go through all of the events. And we've had a week to digest all that news. So I think, you know, we're, I think we're heading in a good direction, Kev. I got to tell you, as far as um, kind of picking up all the pieces and trying to piece together what really happened. Exactly, because it was a week tonight, right now, that we were breaking the story live. And if you look back over all the shows on TFR that covered this throughout the week, then I think you will see there was a plethora of information. Now, we didn't point the finger at any individuals in particular, but we gave people yeah. lots to think about. Joe? Yep. I thought I heard you wanted in there, man. No, 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 no. As a matter of fact, uh, I think Whistler wants in. Johnny Whistles, head to the back cave, man. Let's get the Wookiees out of the way. Yeah, I might as well, Kev. We've got 34 people in here just now. So thanks, everybody, for turning up. Starting with the one and only Joe in the house. Lucky, we've got Penelope, Irish Pete. We've got Adam. We've got Angie Marie, Demarest, Caroline. We've got Cheryl. We've got Chris, Daryl. We've got David, Elvis. Uh -huh. We've got Erica Warrigan. How you doing, brother? We've got Fred Rico, Gergs, John Tita was here next week. Jonathan, we've got Kenneth Webb. How you doing, brother? How you know in here with us? We've got Kev Baker. Ken Kirk. Foot. Yeah, Ken Foot. We've got Kirk. We've got Libby. Uh, we've got Lixty Lass, Mark, Matthew, Michael. We've got Nancy, Peter, myself. Real in for today, something like that anyway. We'll get Reese, Sam, Scottish John, TFR Wookie, Time Lord, The Monkey. No, sorry, 